Hey everybody, this is Anthony from VR Game Rankings and welcome to the PlayStation VR Top 20 Countdown. Before we get into the Top 20 PlayStation VR games, I want to say that if you disagree with this list, the best way you can take action is you can go to VRGameRankings.com www.vrgamerankings.com. You can go there and you can check out the entire top 100 PlayStation VR games and figure out what is your 20 favorite PlayStation VR games. What are your 10 favorite PlayStation VR games? Heck, you can give us your top five PlayStation VR games. You go ahead and submit your top games on the website. Make sure that you're listing that you're doing this for the PlayStation VR Top 100, and your rankings will go in with everyone else's rankings, and it will help improve our rankings for the next time. So if you get mad at what you're seeing here in the Top 20, do something about it. Go to VR Game Rankings and rank your own games as well and help us out. Okay, let's get on to the Top 20. At number 20 is Job Simulator. Now, Job Simulator is coming from Alchemy Labs. Now, this is an original launch game for the PlayStation VR, and it had a price of $29.99 for a very long time. But actually, on the day that I'm doing this top 20 video, the price has dropped now to $19.99, and there has been some new DLC that has been added as well. There's a new overtime mode where you get to work with TempBot, who is a little bit lazy and a little bit unmotivated compared to JobBot. So it has a little bit of a different flavor when you're working late hours and you're doing the night shift in Job Simulator. So Job Simulator is an awesome game. The thing that Job Simulator does better than a lot of other VR games out there is it gives you hands and you can grab things and you can pick up things and you can interact with things. Of all the VR games I've ever played, Job Simulator might give you more agency with your environment than virtually any other game that's out there. There's also this great comedy factor that comes with Job Simulator. It's just hilarious. All the little jokes that are made, the way the robots act, the things they say, it's absolutely hilarious. And Job Simulator is a great game at number 20. At number 19, we have Static. Now, this is coming from Tarzir Studios. This was released back on April 24th of 2017. The price is 20 bucks. And I tell you what, if you feel like the PlayStation VR has a lot of blurry games that don't have very clean and crisp visuals, my suggestion is take a try with Static. And there is a demo for Static. You can try this out. It is one of the cleanest games, one of the best game engines, one of the best lighting engines I've seen on PlayStation VR. Now, I must say I played it on a PlayStation 4 Pro, so that could have been part of it, but one of the cleanest, crispest looking PlayStation VR games I've seen. It's very similar to Portal. It has a really interesting vibe to it, and it really puts you into the experience. Static, of all the games that are there, you're sitting in a chair and you're holding your controller, you're in that game because that's how the game is. It's hard to explain, but it really dials you into the game. That is static at number 19. Number 18, I Expect You to Die from Shell Games. Now, this was released back in 2016, back on December 6th. It's going for $25. And in this game, you're put in these various scenarios in which you're going to die repeatedly. You're kind of like a secret agent that has to solve certain puzzles. But here's the thing. They expect you to die. Now, if you can figure it out and you can get out of there, then you can get your way out of the predicament and you can survive. It's basically trial and error gameplay, but it's very rewarding in VR. And they actually added a new scenario very recently. It's called First class, it's another scenario for the game to give you even more content to work with. I Expect You to Die is considered one of the best puzzle type games of this type and is very interesting, a high quality release by Shell Games. 
At number 17, we have PlayStation VR Worlds. And I'm going to personally say that this game is incredibly underrated at number 17. This game should probably be in the top 10, and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, you can get this game for 20 bucks, and people that try to criticize this game will say, it's nothing but a collection of mini games. Well, it's true, it is a collection of mini games. It just happens to have some very good mini games that are thrown in. First of all, London Heights is almost worth $20 all by itself. It's one of the most powerful VR experiences I've ever had. It's like being inside an action adventure movie. It puts you there. You feel like you're part of it. It's amazing what was done with London Heights. London Heights is a must experience scenario for anyone that has a PlayStation VR. That's obviously the big thing that's included, but you also have the shark cage scenario. This is great for if you have a family member coming over to your house and you want to give them a taste of VR, put them in the shark cage. Let them see the underwater world and see if they can survive long enough to when the actual shark comes and see how they scream and react to a great white shark. Then there's also Danger Ball. There's Scavenger Hunt. There's a lot of different options in PlayStation VR worlds. And yeah, it is a collection of mini games, but it is an awesome collection of mini games. At number 16, we have Robinson the Journey by Crytek. Now, Robinson the Journey was a PlayStation VR exclusive for a short period of time. It released back on November 8th of 2016, and it currently has a price of $50 on the PlayStation Store, which does seem way too high at this point in time. This game should probably be going for about $24.99 at this point. But you know what? Robinson the Journey is one of those love or hate it kind of games. And I personally loved it. VR for me is about going to strange new worlds and exploring the environment and feeling that you've been transported to a magical place. And that's what happens in Robinson the Journey. You have dinosaurs for crying out loud dinosaurs and VR. Now, is there action in this game? Is there fast action? Are there guns? Is there machine guns? No, there's none of that. This is more of a slow paced exploratory game. It's almost a point and click adventure type of game, but brought to VR, but there are dinosaurs and it does have a wonderful environment and a great vibe. That's Robinson the Journey at number 16. At number 15 is Drive Club VR. Now this is coming to us from Evolution Studios. And unfortunately, Evolution Studios is no more. They were disbanded by Sony, but they have made a number of outstanding games over the years. Of course, they brought us the MotorStorm series and they brought us Drive Club. And the VR version of Drive Club is not bad at all. In fact, this game is an original launch game. You can now get it for $19.99, 20 bucks. Every once in a while, it goes on sale for only 10 bucks. And there are some issues with this game. First of all, the graphics are very chunky. One thing I say about a lot of PlayStation VR games is I'll talk about a Vaseline look and Drive Club VR is the champion of the Vaseline look. It kind of looks like a thin layer of Vaseline has been spread over your lenses and everything that you're looking at has this weird pixely chunky kind of a look to it and kind of a shimmering to it. So if you are an absolute graphics whore, you're probably gonna get into Drive Club VR and you won't be very impressed by what you experience. However, if you can get over that, there is a beautiful game here and there are some very nice tracks that you can drive on where you really get transported to another place, especially if you try a convertible. I highly recommend driving in a convertible because it will make you feel in that environment even more, but the interiors of the cars are done very well. Now, you might get a tiny bit of motion sickness with Drive Club VR. The first couple of times I played Drive Club VR, it actually made me pretty queasy, but the third and the fourth time that I played it, I was absolutely fine, and from that point on, I was good to go. And Drive Club VR is one of the better VR racing games that we have, especially on PlayStation VR. We just got Gran Turismo Sport, but unfortunately the cupboard is virtually bare 
when it comes to VR support on Gran Turismo. Hardly any tracks off the bat, hardly any cars that are unlocked. You got to spend so much time with your headset off to be able to do anything in Gran Turismo Sport. So if you want a better option, you might go with Drive Club VR. At number 14, we have Headmaster by Frame Interactive Studio. Now, this is another original launch game. This game goes for $19.99, and this game started out on PlayStation VR, but it has recently come to the HTC Vive and also to the Oculus Rift. So Headmaster is now available on all three major VR platforms. So this game has a super interesting concept because it puts you in what could only be described as a concentration camp. However, it's a concentration camp where you're supposed to learn how to head the ball in soccer. It's all about heading the ball in soccer. That is why they call it Headmaster. And it has a very Portal-esque sense about it with its humor and its presentation. Frame Interactive Studio does a masterful job of giving you this feel like you really are inside a concentration camp and you're only allowed to see exactly what they want you to see. They guide the experience and it is very Portal-esque in its presentation. It is very interesting. That is Headmaster at number 14. At number 13, we have Werewolves Within by Red Storm Entertainment. Now, Werewolves Within came out on December 6th of last year. This game goes for $30. And the main thing about Werewolves Within is when it first hit PlayStation VR, it really lit a fire among the PlayStation VR community. This game is all about multiplayer. This is all about the social interaction with other real VR gamers in real time. That's what Werewolves Within is all about. All people were talking about was Werewolves Within. In fact, I think back in those days, this game actually ranked number one. It was one of the most hyped PlayStation VR games that we had and the social community aspect just took it to a completely different level. Now, of course, the developer, Red Storm Entertainment, has gone on to make Star Trek Bridge Crew, but how incredible is it for this developer to have two games in the PlayStation VR Top 20? That is incredibly impressive. At number 12, we have Thumper by Drool. Now, Thumper was an original launch game for the PlayStation VR. It has since come to the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, but PlayStation VR owners have known about it ever since launch, and this one was so powerful. This is the one where you get your headphones on and you pump up that volume and you just dial into this game like none other. There are no drugs required. You do not need to eat any magic mushrooms or take any LSD because Thumper will provide the psychedelic delic images that will come into your brain and incredible powerful soundtrack just a visceral violent game the idea of a violent rhythm action game seems kind of strange and crazy but that's exactly what thumper has delivered here every time you have to shift far to the right or shift far to the left and you feel like you're slamming up against these tracks you really feel the power you really feel the impact that's thumper at number 12. Number 11 is Star Trek Bridge Crew, and we were just talking about Red Storm Entertainment. The developer is bringing us number 13 Werewolves Within and also number 11 Star Trek Bridge Crew. Now, Star Trek Bridge Crew came out on May 30th of this year. It goes for $50. It's not necessarily a cheap game. And Red Storm Entertainment, what they've done here is they've taken most of the concepts that they've used with Werewolves Within, and they've adapted this group play dynamic and adjusted it to take full advantage of the Star Trek property, and they've done a great job here. Now, there is some criticism, though. Some people will say that at the end of the day, all you're doing is punching and pushing a couple of levers, but you can have a great time. This is one of these games where you might actually want to even enjoy an adult beverage, assuming you're over the age of 21, because you're probably going to be playing with other players in the game that are also enjoying an adult beverage. But basically, Star Trek Bridge Crew, it provides the same kind of interaction that you get with Werewolves Within. It's the social dynamics. It's working with other people. It's having a good time. And it's having friendly camaraderie among other VR participants. That's really what both Werewolves Within and Star Trek Bridge Crew both supply. 
Both of these games could be up your alley, and number 11 is Star Trek Bridge Crew. At number 10, we have Res Infinite. This is coming from Enhanced Games in collaboration with Monstars. Now, this is an original launch game, and it goes for 30 bucks. Res Infinite is one of these interesting games where it basically is a game from a long time ago. It originally came out on the Dreamcast. This is the enhanced version, but now it is even more enhanced and virtual reality mode is added to the experience. Now, in most of the areas of the game, the 3D might not be as dramatic and in your face, but just wait, because if you can get through all of the original areas of the game, you will then unlock Area X, and Area X is absolutely magnificent. You will play through Area X, and if you're anything like me, you're actually going to feel goosebumps going down your arms during certain parts of Area X. It is that impactful. The music, visuals, everything just combines in an incredible symphony. Masterful work by Enhanced Games. Masterful work by Monstars. Res Infinite is easily one of the most powerful PlayStation VR games I've had the privilege of experiencing. My only caution is, is that most of the excitement does come in Area X, which is a late part of the game, and $30 isn't exactly cheap, but Res Infinite is a solid title at number 10. At number 9, we have Dirt Rally by Codemasters. Now, VR support arrived for Dirt Rally on February 17th of this year. If you wanted to buy Dirt Rally right now, it is $59.99. And if you already have Dirt Rally, you can add the VR mode for $15. And it's probably a better idea to go find a used version of this game and just pay $15 to get the VR mode because otherwise it's going to be crazy expensive. But I can tell you when Dirt Rally arrived way back on February 17th, nobody cared how much this game cost, people were raving about it regardless because the thing about Dirt Rally that is so special is not only is the track and the car have that 3D feel, but it's the surrounding roadside graphics that seem to also have been lavished with a number of polygons to just make it all seem 3D, like it continues to be 3D. I don't know how many VR racing games I've played where the track feels incredibly 3D, your car feels incredibly 3D, but everything along the side of the track feels like cardboard cutouts. That's not the case with Dirt Rally. You feel like you're there, and so it adds this extra environment to it. It adds this extra flavor. Codemasters really did an outstanding job with Dirt Rally, and that's coming in at number nine. At number eight is Arizona Sunshine. Now, this game is coming to us from developer Jay Walker Interactive and publisher Vertigo Studio. This was released back on July 5th of this year for $40. This is easily one of the more powerful PlayStation VR games that we have. Now, obviously, this game started off on the HTC Vive and on the Oculus Rift, and it has been ported over to PlayStation VR. The good news is probably 85% of the original Arizona Sunshine experience has made its way through, and it's 85% of one of the best VR games that we've ever seen in VR period. In fact, in the most recent HTC Vive rankings, Arizona Sunshine was number one. So it might sound like a diss that you're only getting 85% of the experience on PlayStation VR, but it's actually incredibly impressive what Jay Walker's Interactive was able to do to get this game running so well on a PlayStation VR system. Now, the thing about Arizona Sunshine is it will give you the feeling of being inside the movie Walking Dead. As you're walking along a bridge and you see zombies coming at you and there's cars everywhere and the cars are stranded, you can open up the doors of the cars, you can open up the trunks of the cars, you'll find extra guns, you'll find extra ammo, and then you'll just get ambushed by a ton of zombies. And the cool thing about these zombies is they look different. These zombies are not carbon cutouts of the same zombie repeated over and over. Now, they only have so many character models, but each one has its own personality and its own flavor. That's Arizona Sunshine at number eight. 
At number seven, we have Spark by CCP Games. Now this game has come out more recently, August 29th, it's going for $30. Here's the thing about Spark, a lot of people think, you know, this is just a sports game. It's just kind of like a racquetball type game where you're throwing a ball back and forth. Why is this $30? Is this really that high of an impact experience? But here's the thing about Spark. It just feels so good. It is just so dialed in. It feels so natural. When you catch that ball, when you throw that ball, when the ball is whizzing through the air and the sound effects that you hear, CCP Games has done such a great job because it gives you that feel. And once again, this game is similar to Static. It's clean. It's crisp. The developer CCP Games have done exactly what they could do to take full advantage of the PlayStation VR capabilities without overstressing the system and trying to do things that it couldn't do. Spark is a very interesting game, but the gameplay is very focused on multiplayer. And one of the things I have to caution people on is if you don't have PlayStation Plus, you might not get that much enjoyment from Spark. Now, there is some single player action that you can get involved in. It's with a tutorial, and I actually had a ton of fun in the tutorial of Spark just trying to get higher and higher up the leaderboard. It's actually a ton of fun, but eventually the game will wear thin if you don't have a membership to PlayStation Plus. That's Spark at number seven. Number six is the Solus Project. Now, the Solus Project is coming to us from Our Rinses and Grip Games. This was released September 18th. It's going for $20. And the reason why the Solus Project has jumped all the way up to number six on this ranking is because this is one of the first PlayStation VR games that gives you the ability to use two move controllers and to also basically go anywhere you want. It appears that Grip Digital has figured out how to use the PlayStation VR move controllers to kind of simulate what's going on with, say, an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive. It's giving you the go anywhere movement and it's giving you agency with both of your hands. And this is an action adventure game. It's a grand experience. You can get lost in this alien planet and this alien world. The only negative thing I could possibly say about the Solus Project is the graphics are a little bit on the blurry side, a little bit on the chunky side. Now, as of this video, I don't believe there's a PlayStation 4 Pro patch for the Solus Project, so it's possible the graphics could get considerably better, at least on a PlayStation 4 Pro, but this still does bring a magical adventure to the PlayStation VR, and the Go Anywhere gameplay gives you that freedom to explore the world in a new way. It's a masterful job by Grip Games, dealing with the limitations of the current move controllers, but still allowing you to have agency and presence on this alien world. That's the Solus Project at number six. At number five, we have Batman Arkham VR. Now this is coming to us from Rocksteady. This is an original launch game for the PlayStation VR. It's 20 bucks. You can get this physically. You can get this digitally. Now the thing about Batman Arkham VR, it's a very short experience. That's one of the number one things people are gonna say about it, but it's also a very powerful experience. We don't have a ton of VR games that put you face to face with another human character, a human character that looks relatively realistic. And that's what's going on with Batman Arkham VR. You will come face to face with characters in the Batman universe and it's almost amazing how real these other characters are. It looks like they're taking up space. It looks like you can reach out and grab them. They really feel real, and the environments are great. Rocksteady did a great job here. The only downside, of course, is the length, but it is a $20 experience. Now, it is a game that you can play several times because there are the Joker riddles that you could spend more time on, and it's also great demo material if you have a relative that is a fan of the Batman franchise, they would love to try this out in VR. That is Batman Arkham VR at number five. Number four is Until Dawn Rush of Blood by Supermassive Games. This is an original launch game. It's $20. It's available physically on disc. It's also available for digital download. And honestly, guys, this is one of my favorite PSVR games, period. I can't tell you how impressed 
I was with what Supermassive Games has delivered. What we have here is we have a game that's on rails. You're basically on this slow moving roller coaster and it's kind of a shooting gallery. You're going through these haunted houses. You're going through this crazy amusement park from hell that's in the winter, in the cold, in the snow with the most eerie music playing in the background. And you go through some incredible levels. There's so much fright. There's so much excitement. There are some jump scares. And if you are scared of eight-legged creatures, you might want to pass on Rush of Blood. But oh my God, you're passing on such a great game. I would really try to muster up some courage, try to play this game, because if you cannot play this one, you're missing out on one of the best PlayStation VR games out there. Rush of Blood is just that good, and it's coming in at number four. Number three is Super Hot. And Super Hot was released back on July 21st. It was made by Super Hot Team, and it's 25 bucks. Here's the thing about Super Hot. This is one of the best ports to the PlayStation VR I've ever seen. I mean, this is an outstanding port. It's amazing to me when I played Super Hot on the PlayStation VR, I've played it on the Vive, I've played it on the Rift, and playing it on PlayStation VR was not much of a downgrade, if a downgrade at all. It was basically the same game. 95% of that experience has shined through. It's a masterful job by the super hot team. All you have to do is make sure that you have a good view of your camera, you're the right distance from your camera, and you'll have a wonderful time in super hot. I had such a great time playing this on the PlayStation VR. It takes great advantage of your move controllers, and this is definitely one of the games I show off to anybody that wants to check out my PlayStation VR. Super hot on the PSVR is an absolute triumph. It's one of the best games on the system, bar none, and it's good to see this game get ranked all the way up there at number three overall. At number two is Resident Evil 7, and it's hard to imagine that Resident Evil 7 is coming in at number two because this game has dominated the VR game ranking charts for PlayStation VR since the inception of VR Game Rankings. VR Game Rankings got started way back in late April, and this game came out on January 24th, and by the time VR Game Rankings got up and running, Resident Evil 7 was already a runaway hit among PlayStation VR gamers. This is easily one of the most powerful PlayStation VR games you will come across. It is masterful what Capcom did here. They have put you in an environment. You feel like you're in a place. You learn this house. You learn where the rooms are. You know where the garage is. You know where the kitchen is. It's like you're here. It's like you're experiencing this place. And the horrors that they bring at you and the fear that they draw from you is absolutely incredible. And it will scare the living daylights out of you. That is Resident Evil 7 at number 2. The number one game on the PlayStation VR Top 20 ranking for our October 19th update is Farpoint by Impulse Gear. Farpoint was released back on May 16th. Now, back when this game first launched, it was the biggest PSVR game that we had received since, well, our number two ranked game, Resident Evil 7. PlayStation VR gamers were looking forward to another powerful example of what VR can bring to the table, and Sony and Impulse Gear delivered in spades. Of course, if we're going to talk about Farpoint, we also need to mention the aim controller that released alongside the game. The aim controller gives players a realistic space marine type combat assault rifle, but more importantly, it puts a thumbstick like control at our fingertips, which allows for smooth locomotion rather than teleportation. This allows the player to fully immerse themselves into the world of Farpoint as they explore the alien terrain and battle giant bugs the size of condominiums. When you've got your boots on the ground in Farpoint with that world completely surrounding you, it's almost as if you've stepped onto the set of Paul Verhoeven's 1997 classic Starship Troopers. I'm not sure if Impulse Gear was specifically going for this vibe, but whatever the case, you really get that feeling. Of course, there are a couple of downsides with Farpoint. 
the biggest of which is the fact that the enemies only attack you from the front. It's as if you're being led down a narrow corridor and the developers always want you focused on what's in front of you. This holds back the experience ever so slightly as you begin to feel that you never need to be concerned with what's behind you. Still, despite this minor shortcoming, it's pretty obvious that Impulse Gear delivered a real banger of an experience with Farpoint. It's great demo material, especially if you have the aim controller. You can put friends or family into this high-powered sci-fi adventure and give them a taste of what it's like to fully immerse themselves in a blockbuster action thriller. That is Farpoint, our number one PlayStation VR game. So that's going to wrap it up for the PlayStation VR Top 20 Rankings, which was updated on October 19th. Once again, if you disagree with the Top 20, we love that. We don't have any problem with that. Go ahead, head over to VRGameRankings.com, www.VRGameRankings.com, and submit your own rankings. Let us know what you think the best 20 games are are for PlayStation VR. We have a top 100 ranking there. We have a top 50, a top 20, and you can take a look at what's there and easily pick out your 20 favorite PlayStation games and then go ahead and submit us a list of your favorite games. Then that way in the next rankings, we will have it updated and your list will be a part of the rankings. So make your voice heard today. That's gonna do it for this countdown video and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. 